In this video, we're going to have a look at some inequalities with fractions. Before we do that, let's just remind ourselves of the rules of divisibility. So here, we want to remind ourselves what happens when we take a positive and divide it by a positive number, what happens to the overall result when we have a negative divided by a negative, what happens when we have a positive divided by a negative, and what happens when we have a negative number divided by a positive number. I'd like you to pause the video here and to think about what the results, the overall results of those divisions will be. Okay, a positive divided by a positive number will have a positive overall result. A negative divided by a negative will also have a positive overall result. A positive divided by a negative will have a negative overall result. And a negative divided by a positive will have a negative overall result. Okay, if we just have a look at division by zero, if we have zero divided by a number, zero divided by a number spells on, you can see it reads on, which means that it is possible to divide a number by uh, zero by a number, and the final answer will be zero. If, however, we have a number divided by zero, that spells no, and that is because that is undefined. So we cannot take a number and divide it by zero. So in a fraction, if we want to know the critical values, we are looking for the values that will make the numerator equal to zero and the denominator equal to zero. And then we can consider what the effect on the whole fraction will be. Okay, so if we just have a look at this example, we asked to solve for x. We have to first get our inequality to have a value of zero on one side so that we can compare it to zero. So our first job is to subtract 1 over x minus 3 from both sides and that will leave us with 0 on the right hand side. We now need to get this to be a single fraction so that we've got a single numerator divided by a single denominator so that we can w dis dis um, decide what our critical values need to be and to see where our numerators and denominators are going to be positive and negative. So our LCD or lowest common multiple will be the multiple of the two factors in your denominators we need to multiply this fraction by x minus 3 over x minus 3, and we need to multiply this fraction by x plus 3 over x plus 3. So that will give us 2x minus 3 minus 1 into x plus 3. If we multiply out and simplify, we're left with 2x minus 6 minus x minus 3. I'm going to leave my denominator factorized because it will be easier for me to see what my critical values are. And if we then simplify the numerator, we get x minus 9 over x plus 3 and x minus 3 is all smaller than or equal to 0. Now, if we have a look at our critical values, our critical values here are the values that are going to make the numerator 0 and the denominator 0. So the value of x in the numerator that will make it 0 is 9, because 9 minus 9 is 0. In the denominator, we have two separate factors, and the value for x in the first factor that will make it uh, 0 will be negative 3, and the value for x in the second factor that will make it negative is positive 3. So we now want to have a look at what the overall effect of those critical values are on our fraction. So we consider them on a number line, negative 3, 3, and 9. We just plot them, and we have a look what happens to x minus 9 at our critical values, and then what happens to each of our factors in the denominator at our critical values. And then we will have a look and see what effect that has on the fraction as a whole. So when you are working with inequalities of fractions, we separate out each factor, we have a look at what the effect of the critical values are, and then we will come and have a look at the effect on the overall fraction. Okay, so if we start with x minus 9, the critical value for that part of the fraction was 9, and we know that x minus 9 will be 0 at um, positive 9. If it's 0 at 9, it will be positive to the right of 9, and it will be negative to the left of 9. Because if you think about it, your, um, you always have positive to the right of 0 and negative to the left of 0. If we consider x plus 3, x plus 3 will be 0 at negative 3. So it will be positive to the right of its critical value of negative 3, and it will be negative to the left of its critical value. x minus 3 will have its 0 value at positive 3, so it will be negative to the left of positive 3, 
and it will be positive to the right of positive 3. Okay, so if we now have a look at the overall effect on our fraction. So if we just have a look, there's our critical values over there. Right, at negative 3, your denominator, your, one of your factors in your denominator was equal to 0. So therefore, at negative 3, your fraction is actually going to be undefined because you can't have a denominator of 0. At positive 3, we have the same problem because x minus 3 was a factor in my denominator and I cannot have 0 times x plus 3 because that will give me 0 and it will make my whole denominator 0, which is undefined. However, at x minus 9, at positive 9, that makes my numerator 0. So I will therefore have a 0 fraction because 0 divided by a number is just 0. Okay, now if we have a look at the signs. Remember that all of these things, the x minus 9, the x plus 3, and the x minus 3, are all being multiplied and divided by each other. So here, if we have a negative divided by a negative, divided by a negative, the overall result will be negative, because a negative divided by a negative is positive, multiply or divide by another negative, and we get a negative result. Here, we'll have a negative multiplied by a positive, which is negative, multiplied by another negative is positive. Here we have a negative multiplied by a positive, which is negative, multiplied by another positive is still negative. And here we have a positive times a positive times a positive, which is positive. So we can see here that to the left of negative 3 on my number line, so all the values smaller than negative 3, I'm going to have negative, my fraction will be negative. And all the values between 3 and 9, my fraction will be negative. The values between negative 3 and 3, my fraction will be positive, And the values to the right of 9, my fraction will be positive. So we go back to the original question. Um, or to our simplified, rather, to our simplified version over here, where we took our critical values from. We were looking for where this fraction was going to be smaller than zero, so we're looking for where it's negative. So it's going to be negative to the left of negative three. We cannot use smaller than or equal to because it's undefined at negative three, so x is not allowed to equal negative three. And we have it, we'll have it negative here between three and nine x is not allowed to be equal to 3 because we would have undefined at positive, th at positive 3, but it is allowed to be equal to 9. So that is our final solution. x will be smaller than negative 3 or x will be between 3 and less than or equal to 9. Okay, in your homework book there is an example for you to try, so please pause the video and try on your own. Okay, so your first step here is to make sure that you are dealing with one fraction. So we need to first find the lowest common denominator. We would need to multiply this fraction by x plus 3 over x plus 3. And we would need to multiply the second fraction by x minus 1 over x minus 1. If we simplify that, we get negative 3x minus 9 plus 2x minus 2 all over x minus 1 x plus 3. And if we simplify in the numerator, we will get negative x minus 11 over x minus 1 times x plus 3. Okay, so if we now look at what our critical values are, the critical value for x in the numerator, the thing that will make x, um, the numerator equal to 0, is negative 11. In the denominator, positive 1 will make this factor equal to 0, and negative 3 will make that factor equal to 0. So if we do our table of signs, our smallest value is negative 11, then negative 3, then positive 1. So we need to consider negative x minus 11, x minus 1, and x plus 3, and then we will consider the fraction as a whole. x plus 3. Right, so... A negative x minus 11 will be 0 at negative 11, so it will be negative to the left of negative 11, and it will be positive to the right of negative 11. x minus 1 will be 0 at positive 1, so it will be negative to the left of positive 1, and it will be positive to the right of positive 1. x plus 3 will be 0 at negative 3, 
it will be negative to the left of negative 3, and it will be positive to the right of, positive, of negative 3. We were looking here for where this inequality was greater than or equal to 0, so we're looking for where it's positive. So we need to just consider the overall effect of our signs. So at negative 11, negative 11 was the value that made our numerator 0, so our whole fraction will be 0 at negative 11. Let's just put my lines in so I can see what's happening here. A negative divided by a negative times by another negative will give you a negative. A positive divided by a negative times a negative will give you a positive. A positive divided by a negative times a positive will give you a negative. And a positive times a positive times a positive will give you a positive. Okay, at negative 3, you will have an undefined fraction because that will make your denominator 0. And at positive 1, you will have an undefined fraction. So if we want to know where this is positive, it will be where x is greater than or equal to negative 11 because at negative 11 the value of my fraction is just 0 but it can only be smaller than negative 3 not equal to negative 3 because at negative 3 it's undefined or x needs to be greater than positive 1 